Hey folks, this is Shock, and we're going to do a Bible study right now. I got the Bible out here. And um, if you look right below this video, right below here, you'll see my website. And when you go there, you can see this debate where this is Christopher Hitchens. He lost the debate. And it's an excellent debate. And right when you go there, you'll see it. Now, it's a long debate. It's like two hours long. So I have it on my website right here below at www.shockonnow.net. Now, that's the website you go to. Uh, let me show you. Shockonnow.net. And when you go there, you'll see the debate where Christopher Hitchens loses to a much wiser Christian theist. Um, you'll see uh, Hitchens lose to this gentleman here. William Lane Craig actually wins the debate. Um, there's one embarrassing part there, I think, for Hitchens, where Hitchens doesn't know the answer to some of the questions, and he actually delays uh, the debate and acts like his microphone's loose or something. You should go check it out. But let's do a Bible study now, and... Let's call this Bible study, What About the Unbeliever? We'll call it the Unbeliever. And do you know that when uh, Jesus Christ was uh, ascending to heaven, he said three things. He talked about three different things. And here's what he said. Listen to this. He says that when he leaves, he says it's better for him to leave because he will send the Holy Spirit, the helper, he calls it, and he will convict the unbeliever of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. So a lot of people will say to me, well, Shock, what about the person, the unbeliever? What about the person that, you know, rejects God or rejects Jesus Christ? Well, what we're going to go through here. I kind of want you to think outside the box. And the reality of it is that there is the Holy Spirit that God has put into the world that Jesus Christ talks about. And when Jesus Christ talks about this, and if you go to John 16, verses 7 uh, through 11, Jesus talks about this Holy Spirit that comes into the world now, I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit that's indwelling believers like you and I as Christians. The, what we're talking about here is a spirit that actually convicts the unbeliever of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So God has put into place on this earth a, a work, a witness, if you will, to the unbeliever so that no one will have an excuse. This is why when you read in Romans, let's go there now, Romans 1, 19, notice it says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse." Indeed, Paul says that they, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. So you have this Holy Spirit that is witnessing to the unbeliever. The unbeliever is not like a lost lamb that doesn't know, you know, top from bottom or left to right. They have this Holy Spirit that is convicting them, like Jesus said, of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. Now notice, Jesus is describing a ministry of the Holy Spirit that's not towards the believer only, but to the world. And he says specifically, go ahead and read those verses, John 16, verses 7, 11. He says specifically, uh, in, that, in those verses, he says, uh, because of sin, because they do not believe in me, so he convicts, notice it's a threefold witness. The Spirit is witnessing to the unbeliever. Number one, he convicts the unbeliever of his sin. Number two, he convicts the unbeliever of God's righteousness and his consequence condemnation before this righteous God. 
So an unbeliever that is convicted can know such truths as such as God exists or I am guilty before God or I need God's forgiveness. Now, if it weren't for the work of this Holy Spirit witnessing to the unbelieving world, no one would ever become a Christian. Look at Romans 3, verses 10 and 11. Let's go there now. Okay, look at this. Notice uh, what happens here. It says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Now, what Paul is basically saying here is that the natural man left to his own is hostile to God. He's hostile. So once again, if it weren't for the work of the Holy Spirit, no one would ever become a Christian. Uh, Paul says he's already charged that natural man left to himself does not seek God. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discern. So, without the Spirit of God, man thinks spiritual things are foolish as he cannot understand him, understand God. Now, if you go to Romans chapter 8 and 7, let's go there now. Well, here's 7. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but Paul says that the natural man left to himself listen closely, is hostile to God. So that the natural man is actually at war with God apart from the Spirit of God. Now, then read John 3.16. Go to John 3.16. I'll just read it to you. This is where Jesus says that men love darkness rather than light. So, the natural thing, the default position for the natural man is to be hostile to God, to not seek after God. But the fact that you and I will find people, non-Christians of all shapes, sizes, and beliefs, the fact that we will find not that we will find people, non-Christians, who are seeking God and who are ready to believe in Christ when you share the gospel with them, is evidence that the Spirit of God has already been working in their hearts, you guys. And the Spirit convicts them and draws them to himself so that their hearts are ready for the truth. So, when someone says, well, what about the unbeliever? Remember what Jesus said. Go to John 16, verses 7 through 11. Remember, Jesus says, it's better that I go because when I go, I will send you the helper. He's talking about the Holy Spirit that's going to come and convict the world of those three things. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now, the unbeliever knows this. You can tell that they have this conviction. Have you ever noticed, and if you're a Christian, you know this, whenever you start talking about these things, sin, righteousness, and judgment, immediately you see the conviction in some of our unbelieving friends, and they get hostile towards the Word of God. This is their natural man. So, Remember what Paul says. He says, natural man left to himself does not seek God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. They'll actually make fun of it and things like that. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So, what do we know? We know, fact one, that Jesus said that when he ascends to heaven, that he will send the helper, he will convict the world. He's not talking about just you and I as Christians. He's talking about unbelievers. He will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. This witness of the Spirit is threefold. He convicts the unbeliever of his sin, he convicts the unbeliever of God's righteousness, and his consequence condemnation before this righteous God. This is why when you read, um, go to the very first page of Romans, and then we're going to wrap this up here. This is why um, 
people will not have an excuse to reject God. The witness of the Holy Spirit is there. It is prevalent in their lives. This is why it says in Romans 1.19, you should read that, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Notice the Spirit working in their lives. This is the unbeliever that they're talking about in Romans. They're not talking about a Christian. Notice it says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to, unto them. Now, we got a little bit more time. Um, I want to wrap this up. And don't forget, go here, right below this video, you can see Christopher Hitchens lose the debate right below here uh, at shockonow.net. Now, let's go, I want to show you something here. Hold on a second. And by the way, when you go, uh, why, why I'm going to this page, when you go to uh, shockonel.net, don't forget to click at the top. I'll show you in a moment. Well, hold on, I got it. Click up here where it says, you guys are going to love this. Um, where is it at? Uh, podcast, podcast. Oh, yeah. Music and podcast. Now, check this out. When you go to the music and podcast page, um, you're going to see some debates. This is where Dan, uh, Dan Dennett, I believe, the atheist, admits that atheism does terrible things in debate. You could download it MP3 or you could stream it here. Uh, this is William Lane Craig on the Jesus Passion. Is it hyper history? Evidence for Christianity. How did the universe begin? Uh, this is a, a live debate. Peter Atkins versus Craig. Peter Atkins loses that debate. Um, R William Lane Craig versus Richard Carrier. Richard Carrier loses that debate. Did Jesus rise from the dead? This is an awesome debate um, between a Christian and a Muslim. The Muslim loses that debate. Um, this is excellent. Um, we've all heard about in the Bible, a lot of people will say, well, God approved of slavery and all that. This was really not true. It's, 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 you really need to understand uh, what Scripture is talking about. Go here and listen to this. There's a, a great book I suggest you get it called Is God a Moral Monster by Paul Copan. All these are live debates. This one is excellent. Sam Harris loses to William Lane Craig. You know Sam Harris is actually advising atheists not to call themselves atheists. I'm not making this up. You can do a search on um, the internet. He says that atheist reputation is so bad right now that people compare him to child molesters in the same conversation. You've got to go ahead and look up that quote by Sam Harris. That's how horrible a reputation atheism has. And thank God I left atheism and I now know truth in Jesus Christ. Now, remember, Jesus said he's going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to convict the world of sin, righteousness, judgment. Look what Jesus says. He says, for everyone that does evil hates the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved but he that doeth truth comes to the light that his deeds may be manifest that they are rotten god so check out shockonow.net right below watch the debate where hitchens loses and don't forget to look at our podcast page god bless you guys this is shock i love you have a great week oh by the way i'll see you after may 21st don't worry the world will still be here ain't nothing gonna happen <laughs>